This is Mari Robson of Love Lulu Creative, a podcast that supports and celebrates artists and creative entrepreneurs while giving back to the community in a unique and meaningful way. This is episode number 11, and I have such a fun interview for you today. If you have ever wondered what it's like to make a living as a full-time artist, then this is the episode for you. Today on the show, I have mixed media artist Christy Kohut. She has been named one of the seven Next Big Thing artists by El Decor magazine, and I have to agree with them. She's been featured in all the design blogs, from Rue Daily to Design Sponge. She's been featured in several magazines, uh, including Architectural Digest and Town and Country. The list goes on and on. And her work speaks for itself. It's absolutely beautiful. But what's so interesting about this is that she didn't start out as an artist. She actually started out in the world of advertising. So we kind of talk about her creative journey and what led her to doing the work that she is doing now and and how she's doing it as a full-time, a full-time artist, which is really, really great. We also talk about her uh, process of creating art because I've been doing this a long time and even I couldn't figure out how she puts these uh, mixed media pieces together and they're so fun. Oh my gosh, they're so colorful. So stay tuned for the whole uh, YouTube version of this so you can see a lot of her work. And then also definitely go visit her website and see her work there as well. We talk about what it's like to be a new gallery owner. She just opened one in the past November and how that evolved for her and what's that's been looking like for her. She also offers us a ton of advice, which is super helpful if this is a path that you're thinking about pursuing, uh, becoming a fine artist or a mixed media artist. Uh, Really good, good stuff. So stay tuned for a really interesting, fun, happy interview with the lovely Christy Kohut. Hi, Christy. It is so nice to meet you and to have you here on the podcast. I am so honored to be here. It's such a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Oh, gosh. I, I'm really excited because I've been following you for a while and I just, I really love your work. It's so visually beautiful and um, happy, which brings me to the name. <laughs> it, so you have it, it, your studio is Happy Art. Is that correct? Yeah, so um, I, I started, so it's happy art and, and pattern is kind of how it originated. And it's since then evolved into Christy Kohut Studio. But the happy art has stuck, um, you know, as far as all my social media handles and whatnot. And I still get reference to that. So, And you spell it H-P-I, H-A-P-I. Correct. Correct. Yes. That's fun. I like that. Um, okay, so now are you in Chicago? Yes, I'm in Chicago. Uh, my studio gallery is actually in the North Shore of Chicago, uh, about 35, 40 minutes north of the city. Oh, I'm, I'm going to ask you about that shortly, but sure. I want to backtrack and, and ask you, did you grow up in Chicago? Is, is that where you've always lived? I grew up here and uh, went away to, to college, and from there I moved to New York And um, I lived in New York City for a while, and then Ann Arbor for a while, and then eventually my husband and I made our way back here. So kind of came full circle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was my other question. I was going to ask you if you if you did go to college, did you study art, or where where what did you study when you were in college? Where did you go to school? So I went to University of Missouri. I went to their journalism school. I was a journalism major. Um, I started in broadcast journalism. That was what I wanted to do. I, you know, it's funny because art had always been a part of my life ever since I was a little girl. Uh, but I'd always heard, oh, you, you can't be an artist. Like you have to go get a real job. So, <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, okay, which is so, why we're doing this podcast. Which is why we're doing this because that is not true. Exactly. <laughs> and I, yeah. So I was a journalism major and I, I absolutely loved it. Um, but I would always, I would take art classes, those would be all of my electives. And I would actually, I would stay at the university through the summer because you couldn't always get into the classes because the um, art majors, of course, had first dibs. Mm -hmm. Um, So those were my fun classes, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I studied, I studied journalism and I eventually switched to advertising. And um, 
I got a job out of college at Ogilvy and Mather in New York, and I started in the client service side. So you're kind of more of like the project man- manager, or the one that's doing the strategy and whatnot for advertising. And I'll never forget, I was, I was in the office and the first time I had to go down to, I think it was the eighth floor, I could get this wrong if there's anyone listening from Ogilvy, um, the eighth floor, which is where all the creatives are. And those are the teams that actually design the ads and the television commercials and do the copy and, and everything. And I was just in awe. I'm like, oh, this floor, it even looked different. It had chalkboard paint and pool tables and there was art everywhere and something in me just lit up. So at that point, I realized that I, I loved advertising, but I wanted to create. I had a deep need in me to create something and create something visually. So I started taking classes and working on my portfolio in all of my spare time, which wasn't a lot at that point, working in advertising. Um, And I continued taking classes. I worked in the Detroit office for a while, and I went to Center for Creative Studies there and built up my portfolio. And then I switched to the creative side as an art director, um, transferring to the Chicago office. And that's where I spent kind of the majority of my 20s. working on big ad campaigns for big brands and with big budgets and, you know, sky is the limit. And I absolutely loved it. It was, it was a lot of fun. So that is, that's kind of my background. Um, and then when my son was born, I was, let's see, it was about 30. My son was born. I decided that I, I didn't want to miss a moment with him. So I decided to stay home with him. Um, as much as I loved advertising, it was just a, a lot of crazy hours, a lot of late nights and weekends of travel. And I, I stayed home with him. And of course, after like a year or two, I just, I started to get that itch that I, you know, I, I wanted to create again. And my husband said, well, why don't we put in a studio and, you know, you can, you can start doing kind of getting back to what you love and making art. And so I said, okay, you know, that's, that's a good idea. Let's do it. And the moment I picked up that brush, I just, I could not stop. I just kept painting and painting and painting and creating work. And I made a lot of really, really, really horrible work. Um, but I will say you have to get through that. You have to go through the bad stuff to, you know, to really just like find your, find your voice and find your style. So mm, I think that's really, really true. We have almost very, very similar backgrounds. I, I was in advertising for 10 years until I had my first daughter. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> and, oh, my goodness. I love the that. Same, the same thing. Yes. I was like, nope. I went back to work. And I'm like, no, nah, I think I'm going to stay on with this I kid. It's, <laughs> it's a tough. I mean, it's, it's a tough thing when you love what you do, but it's mm-hmm. like, oh, it's so precious. Those moments. Yeah, there was a little bit of an identity crisis, you know. After like leaving that job and being like, oh, now who am I? I'm just a mom. But wow, just a yes. mom. That's a really powerful <laughs> job to have. <laughs> I completely agree with that. Definitely full-fledged identity crisis. And, and it sounds like you have a really supportive husband, which is also really great. That oh, he's I'm so grateful. He's he's amazing. He's he's the best. He's been the biggest supporter of of everything that I do. So I don't know what I would do without that. I'm really grateful. So you started and you started just making art where you, so somewhat kind of self-taught. Was there, uh, I mean, you were taking classes and you'd been around it. So, but as your own personal journey, you, you said you were kind of making just all kinds of things or, or how did, what did that process look like for you? Yeah, absolutely. So I just, I started, I just started creating and creating, you know, kind of, I was all over the board, um, just doing my process is very, very intuitive. So, um, I was just kind of following that and I wasn't showing my work to anybody. I had no, I had no intention. I just was like, there was a voice inside of me that was so strong. It was like, you need to make art, make art. And you know, it's funny because I don't know, like maybe being a new mom, like I, I, in the beginning, like I just, I felt like Oh gosh, I love doing this so much. This is like, like I felt almost like selfish, like taking the extra time to do it. I'm like, I, I just love this so much. Mm-hmm. And I had to, I had to really get over that hurdle. Um, because I, I think, you know, when you have, 
when you have that voice inside of you, I think there is, there's no better thing than sharing your work. I mean, I, and I can look at other artists and look at other creatives and I'm like, oh my goodness, please do what you do. And Mm -hmm. it took me a while to kind of have that come and realize, okay, you know, like this is a good thing. You should be doing your art and you should be sharing it. Um, Absolutely. I, 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 I couldn't even imagine a world without art or music or literature. I mean, right. the, the create it's 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 critical. We need, <laughs> so don't, it. Don't, we need it. Yes, we need it. Yeah, and we want to support it, and we want to make lots of it. And um, it's a very it's a very great calling to have. So don't feel guilty about it. That's for sure. I'm glad you worked through that. Yeah, um, I mean. Yeah. And it's like, now I just want to kind of shout it out there to everyone. Cause I think as I have not met an artist yet that doesn't go through the, you know, who am I to think I can do this? You know, I don't, I don't have an art degree. I, I you know, you look at people, they have MFAs. I'm like, Oh my goodness. Uh, you know, am I a fraud? Like I, I shouldn't even be doing this. Who am I to think that I can? And it's like, gosh, you got to get over that. If you have that inside of you, you just mm-hmm. have to create. So I see great value in education with art. There's a lot of things that you can learn from going through it that way, but it's not something um, sometimes, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like if you, you have too much information that can block you, it's like just create, you know, and and go through that. I mean, you, you create, you went through your own education by just starting to do the work and do the work and repeat doing the work and showing up and doing the work. I mean, yes, that's, and that, that's it's just a different type of education, you know? Absolutely. Yes. So, uh, yes. so how long ago, about how long ago was that when you so, just started really committing to it? It's been about 10 years now. Okay. So, and it, and it started, it started slowly. And the first few years I didn't, I didn't, you know, I just kind of hold up and just made my work. And then I started putting it out there in the world, testing the water, probably around, let's see, like 2011, 2012, I want to say. And then 2014 is when I officially established my studio and um, started my business and really just went all in. So it just kind of, yeah. So that beginning body of work that you were working on to when you finally said to yourself, okay, I'm ready. I'm going to put this out there and let people see it and, and make of it what they will. Did the work look similar or was it, did it evolve or how did that look for you? Sure. Yeah. So it definitely, I mean, there are, there are some aspects that are still a big part of my work today. Um, my agate, I started out doing a lot of those, um, working on rice paper, which I still do today. Um, a lot of, I was doing a lot of pattern and, and sketching and illustration. So a lot of that feeds into my collage work today. So it definitely, yeah, it was just like the start. And then, you know, I think, I feel like art is just, it's like you, you grow branches, right? Like you start something and then that feeds to something else. And then, you know, maybe it melds together with something down the road that you never would have thought about. I kind of love how things just like the dots just kind of start to connect. So when I left advertising, I, I've always been into graphic design and I've always been an artist, but I also um, really loved being an interior designer. So I went into the world of interior design and, and I loved doing the room rendering. So that's part, that was the part of the job that I loved the most, you know, putting together the rooms and the Ooh, sketches. And yeah. stuff. But then in doing so, I realized there was a lot of missing materials, which is then I ended up taking my background as a graphic designer and developing fabrics and, and designing for, um, you know, bigger companies designing textiles. So you're right. Like the whole full circle of like being an interior designer, a graphic designer, seeing the missing piece in this textile world and bringing the two together and being able to read it that way. And I've been doing this probably a little bit longer than you, (laughs) but I, I love to hear the evolution of an artist and exactly what you're just saying about how probably the pieces that you started with, there's still that element that will, that thread that will continue through. It'll just kind of morph in a different way. Um, and I think that's just, that's really great that that's, it wasn't like you just started in one thing and then it, you shifted completely over somewhere else, but okay. I'm going on a little tangent. No, I, I, love, that. <laughs> I love hearing, 
I love hearing about your journey. You know, it's, it's really interesting. Like I, I feel like there is, you know, every artist has their own path. And if you follow the traditional path, I think that's amazing. And, and if you don't, that's okay too. I, I think like after going through the, oh my goodness, should I be doing this? And now coming out on the other side and realizing, okay, not following the traditional path was the very best thing Mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. my practice. I just didn't realize it at the time. I think if you can kind of own, own your story and own your authenticity and, you know, find your own way. I think that is just the best, probably like the best thing ever that I've, I've realized in, in going through this. Um, and you're not going to be right for everybody and that's okay. (laughs) Yeah. Right. But no, it's, it's really, well, what I read, uh, El Decor named you as one of the seven next big thing artists. I mean, that's kind of a confirmation that you're doing the right thing. <laughs> oh man, I needed that. I was like, oh my goodness, what am I doing? And that was, uh, I'm, wow. I'm so grateful for, you know, artists when, when you're starting out, you don't have a lot of, you don't have a marketing budget. So it's, it's, um, that was, I was really grateful for, that was pretty amazing. Well, you have, um, some really, okay, wait, I want to talk about that. I would like to talk about that part of it. Uh, but sure. I want to talk about your the process of your work because I've been doing this a long time and I can't figure out how you create your work. <laughs> it's so beautiful. And there's it oh, looks like there's you. a lot of time that goes into it and a lot of different elements. And um, I'm trying to figure out, is it acrylic or is it resin? Or how how do you, like for instance, your, your mixed media pieces that are somewhat collaged together, but very three dimensional. How are you, how do you create those? Sure. So you, yeah, you were, you're spot on. It's a, it's a lot of different steps. Um, so I basically, I, the beginning of my process is just culling through and finding different elements, things that catch my eye. Like I'll, I'll go through a lot of fashion magazines and art magazines and, um, I know I love kind of blending, maybe it's because of my advertising background, but I, I love blending things from the commercial world, kind of that graphicness. Um, I'm really inspired by the fashion world and then combining that all with nature. So I'll pull together just kind of different sources and bits and pieces. Um, and then I also have my own il- personal illustrations and patterns that I create, photography, and I collage all those together. Um, so I'll just start out on, with like giant sheets of either canvas or really thick paper. Um, I tend to use a lot of thick paper to do my collages on. And then from there, that's a little bit of, you know, there's just a little bit of, I don't know, serendipity that happens, right? It's very intuitive and quick. And I'll find these bits and pieces that for some reason, just, um, kind of stick out to me. I just, I find like the combinations of colors are just interesting or, uh, a graphic piece next to a pattern and I'll hand cut all of those into individual flowers or butterflies. Um, essentially the, the three dimensional pieces of my work. And then from there, I coat them with acrylic and, um, glass glitter and crystals and like once, a, you coat them with a, like a clear acrylic, like, mm-hmm. oh. yes. And from there, it, that makes the pieces, um, so I can manipulate them and make them more 3d. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Very then, cool. Oh, I love it. I'll pull together. Sometimes like I'll, it'll be more intuitive and sometimes I'll have more of a vision for what the finished piece will be. And then I, yeah, I just, I assemble it onto the, either it's, it's either canvas or, um, a sheet of acrylic that's floated over canvas. And then I create the, the finished piece. So how did you even figure out? <laughs> I mean, that was a lot of the trial and error, I would imagine. A lot of trial and error. Oh my goodness. So much trial and error. And you know, I, I, I don't know, just bit by bit, a little at a time, a lot of mess ups. And, um, I mean, that's just an hours and hours evolution. of fun. Yeah, a lot, a, a lot of craziness. <laughs> I mean, sitting there cutting, I can't tell you how many flower or how many hours I've spent cutting flowers, but I love it. Which, oh, you know, I love it too. It's beautiful. <laughs> thank you. 
Um, so how do you do the, uh, the sculptures then? Like they're like solid acrylic. Is that how it is or? Yeah. So the sculptures are solid acrylic, uh, off, oftentimes with a layer of iridescent acrylic. And then I create the art right on them, um, and finish them with the crystals. And I know what I love about them. It's so hard to show about working with these sculptures is, it gives you this ability just to create something more three-dimensional and interactive. So like as you move around the block, it changes. So that's a lot of fun to work with. I'm really enjoying that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they're kind of meant to be viewed 360. So you can rotate them or, you know, keep them on your favorite side. It, it, they work all around, I guess. Oh, they're, they're absolutely just stunning. So was that, was that something that you taught yourself how to do or were you looking at YouTube videos, like how to make an acrylic sculpture or, I mean, how hey. did you that out? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a big believer in, I'm a big believer in play and just setting aside that time just to kind of dream up things and experiment and see what works and see, you know, what goes. And there's a, a lot of things that don't work and get pushed to the side. But um, I think that that's an important part of my practice. Um, that I always want to get in because you never know where it's going to lead. And it's, it's fun when it kind of gives you a new area to work in. I love that. And I love that you call it practice and <laughs> your practice. And I love that you call it playing. You're just playing with it. And those are, are the things that come out of it. That's really a, a, a very important part of the creative process instead of just trying to jump to the end and, and, you know, output as much as many things as possible. Um, but I do have a question about that. Okay. So I was on your Instagram and I saw that you opened a gallery and the gallery is that, is that something you've had for a while or this was, I think back in November. Yes. So I, I opened the space September. I was in here and this is, so basically it's a, a, um, the front half of my space is the gallery space and the back half is my working studio. So it's kind of like an open kitchen concept, right? So it's, as you walk in, you can see the back and the front is where I exhibit all of my work. So it officially opened in November and yay! congratulations. Thank you. It's, it's definitely been a dream and a long time coming. Um, I was in, Growing out of my old space, I was ready for some more space to work and just be able to meet with collectors. And I work with a lot of interior designers. So to have a place where I can show and photograph my work is is really dreamy. So it's been a lot of fun. So I think this is um, really great because uh, you were working out of your home. Is that what was where your studio was yeah, before? So I, yep, I had. I went through two studios in my home. Um, first one smaller, and then um, converted into a larger studio. And then I just was busting at the seams and glitter was getting everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's so funny. So that, you know, that's, that's really wonderful. And congratulations. That is a big accomplishment. And, um, so you say that you work with interior designers and you're working with collectors. I also read that you called your, you're calling yourself a, an artelier. Did I say that right? Oh, an art liar. An art liar. Oh, art that's liar. Not fancier. I'll take that. No. <laughs> um, an and art I, I can, yeah. I totally butchered that, I'm sure. But tell me what, tell me a little bit more about your philosophy on that because I, I find that really, that was really interesting. So when I was first starting out, I would, you know, send my work to galleries, which was, of course, the only, you know, it's the only way that I knew you could make a career or, you know, uh, as an artist. And it was like crickets. I mean, nothing. I didn't even garner a response back. <laughs> so um, I was like, well, I love this and I'm going to make art and I'm going to find a way to do this. And so I, I feel like now looking back, I, I didn't follow the traditional route. And what I think is amazing is that we're living in such an incredible, unique time right now with social media and the internet. It's, I feel like it's just breaking down the barriers. And so 
I kind of went my own way. And in the beginning, I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, what's going to happen? You know, is this, is this the right thing to do? And now I realize, oh God, that's the best thing I could have done. Um, cause it really just, it's, it's been amazing. Um, I, I just kind of went for it and now those galleries are calling me and saying, Hey, <laughs> so can we this, show your work. And I'm this like, is so great. I really, really <laughs> I like this. I love that you push through the nose because every artist is going to face that and every artist will take it personally because their artwork is there is them. So the fact that you like, so hard not to, right? <laughs> right, right. But you do have to look at it from the gallery perspective of like, is this something that, uh, my clientele will, will, will buy, you know, is it, is it a right fit? And, you know, it's, I, I still like to support the galleries as well, but I love that you didn't give up and that you decided to just do it on your own. And that's a very viable other way of doing it. You're kind of a little rebel, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just going to blaze your own path through it all. Um, so I'm you, I'll oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I, I was just going to say, you know, you know, it's like, oh, I don't know. I think that, that voice, it just, you just get, you just got to follow it. Um, and you know, I know, I know that you have a lot of young artists listening to this and it's, it can be really, really hard when you're, when you're just starting out and you're, you know, you're going to get those no's, but you just got to keep putting more out there and then you're going to get those yeses and then you're going to get more yeses and it's so worth it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I totally yeah. agree with that. Okay. So you started your, your gallery and I'm wondering how you use, or you're utilizing social media to drive traffic to your new business there. Okay. Oh, that's a great question. Um, I got to figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, um, the, the space I'm not, it's not a traditional brick and mortar kind of retail gallery space where it's staffed full time. Um, I'm treating it more as my working studio and I was finding in my practice, I would have collectors and interior designers want to come see the work in person and, and want to meet with me. And, um, I needed a space to be able to do that. So that's kind of how I'm treating it. And, um, I haven't done a ton to promote it. It's on, it's in a down the downtown area. Um, so it kind of serves a little bit as, as a billboard, but it really is primarily kind of fitting in for what my needs already are. So, um, as of right now, I'm not doing anything active, but one of these days I may, <laughs> you know, it's like in all our spare time. Right. Um, right. No, I mean, that's great. Oh, go ahead. No, you, were, you started to say something about Instagram. You oh, I, Instagram I and could, Pinterest, are those your main platforms that you like to use? Yes. And I will say for artists, I think Instagram is just incredible. Mm -hmm. It's, it's amazing. Um, it really kind of surprised me. I can't like how many people will be like, I saw your work on interest on Instagram, or I've been following your work on Instagram, or I'll post something and I'll get a direct message saying, I, I want that piece. I need that piece. And I, you know, how many direct sales I get coming straight from Instagram. It's, um, blown me away. Uh, I really am grateful for that platform. And I think it's just, it's neat because you can kind of let people into the story behind the art, you know, and they can follow along. You can show the behind the scenes and um, kind of build a relationship, which mm -hmm. I just think is so fun and is one of the reasons why I love kind of being my own gallery because I love my collectors and I love getting to know them and, um, working with them and, you know, helping them find that perfect piece. So I can't imagine, you know, having a middleman in, in a sense. I think it's just, it's incredible to have that direct relationship. Do you feel, are you like, it's kind of like, I, I think Instagram is so great too. And then they go and they change the algorithm. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, it just, it, to me, for me, I just saw kind of a little bit more of a shift to being more on the stories than necessarily posting nonstop on, on the da my daily feed. Um, because the way it gets shown differently, how, yeah. do, how are you feeling about that? Because I think a lot of artists, they've, you know, make this their bread and butter and then all of a sudden they change something and, um, it's a game changer. So it's kind of like putting all your eggs in one basket. 
I think you bring up a very, very good point. And yes, I mean, at the end of the day, Instagram, Facebook, they're businesses. So their, their intent is, is to make money and, you know, they have every right to do that. Um, and while I wish that wasn't the case, you know, it is, but I think you, I think the key to that is to not put all your eggs in one basket and to have, um, you know, different approaches. So when that does happen, you have other things that you can use. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of email marketing and I'm really starting to um, put a focus on that because, you know, I think in that sense, then if people are signing up for your newsletter, they're saying, number one, hey, I want to hear from you, which is, which is great. Um, and then you own those names. So it's not mm -hmm. controlled by Instagram or Facebook. Um, and I just, I think it's really powerful because you can speak directly one-on-one -on -one with someone and, um, you know, kind of put them through the, you know, a journey. So there's right now I use, um, kind of like a, a funnel, I guess is the correct marketing term for this, where when you sign up for my newsletter, you're going to get a set of emails that will take you through kind of the background, who I am, what's my story, what's my process like. Um, I find a lot of people are, they're, you know, they're eager for help picking art and how do you select a piece and should you do an original or should you do a reproduction and where's the best place to put it and how to hang it. So I really try to kind of share all the things that um, I've learned and that I think are helpful through the email marketing. Mm, um, I, I think you're right on target with that. I think that and your email list is something that you should definitely focus on, on uh, growing and nobody can change that on you. <laughs> no one can change it. Yes. And there's a lot of, a lot of experts out there. Like if you're an artist just starting out, uh, there's a lot of incredibly um, um, wise and fun people out like Jenna Kucher. I don't know if you're familiar with her, mm -hmm. but Gold I, digger. Yeah. Gold digger. I, I follow her work and, uh, you know, listen to a lot of that. And I think it's so helpful. And Seth Godin's another great one. Mm -hmm. um, Marie Forleo. Um, so there's, there's a lot of great resources out there. I agree. I agree. Um, I'm going to sidetrack a little bit because I wanted sure. to ask you, do you make you, because you are more of a gallery, I'm wondering if, do you work in creating a collection where you're working on something for months and months and you don't really show it to anybody and then you have a launch and like, here's, this is the collection that's being released this day. Or are you kind of just creating work as you go and selling it as you go? So it's interesting that you say that because that is one of the things that I think is really great about having this space um, and that I am actually in the process of doing right now. So I'm working on um, doing a collection, a body of work that is all focused. The first one's going to be for my Symphonic Atlas series. Um, and then from there, I will be working on my 3D Bloom series. Um, so that is what I'm starting to do. And I'm, I'm really excited because I think, you know, it's just, it, it pushes your work in a different direction when you work in a collection like that, as opposed to in the past, I, you know, I, I would kind of more bounce around intuitively. So I'm, I'm excited about having the opportunity to do this now that I have the space to dedicate to it. Mm, I love that. So are you going to share any of that information or are you going to wait until the whole body of work is completed and then you do a show? Is that how you see yourself doing it or? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then I will, you know, of course it'll be, it'll all be hanging in the gallery. So I'll do an opening. Um, I also like to do everything online. I mean, 90% of my collectors are not in the area. Um, 90% of my sales are there. It's all over, all over the country. Um, so online is very, very big for me. So I will definitely have an online component for, for that. Um, I'm also on different websites, artsy and Saatchi. So I'll transfer all the work onto there as well. And yeah, I mean, I think art, it's, it's almost like matchmaking and the more you can put your work out there, it's like, you never know where the collectors are going to be. And it's, when people find that piece that resonates with them, it's, it's a lot of fun. So, so I, I love that. I totally agree with that. I, 
I liked going through your website and kind of seeing everything that you've been working on and, and the evolution, kind of marrying it with looking at what you were doing on Instagram. And now, uh, and now you've branched out also into uh, home goods, doing uh, wallpaper and rugs and um, textiles. And so you kind of look like, from my perspective, you're becoming more of a lifestyle brand, uh, spinning off of this this body of work that you're creating. Is is that the big goal? Like, where do you see yourself being in five years? Oh yeah, that that's a great question. So I would say that fine art is is definitely eighty percent of what I do, and and will remain the focus. That is that is my true love. Um, and that's where I spend the majority of my time and kind of, or what my goals are moving forward. So, um, fine art will, will be the focus. The, the home decor line is a lot of fun and I've had a lot of fun with this. Um, and I would say that takes up about maybe 20% of what I do. Um, and it's an, it's an extension of my fine art. So it stems from there. Um, having my design. Oh, Sorry, are those through partnerships or are they, are you actually doing th the production of these? Sure. Great question. So the rugs are a partnership. Um, I've collaborated with a company out of New York and so they handle all the uh, production. They're all handmade in India. So it's my design and we work together to pick the right thread colors and all that. Um, but they handle the creation of that. And then my everything else is all within my studio. Um, the fabric and pillows, all the textiles are made in the US and they're printed on fabric imported from Belgium. And we have an in incredible company that handles all of the, um, the production of those pieces. And the wallpaper is actually printed using the same technique as my fine art giclés. So the printing and the color is just really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. So that's all done within my studio. Um, and it's a lot, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. I'm really, I like having that extension. I think that, you know, to be able to surround yourself with art and color and pattern is just the best thing. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I, try to give different ways that you can live with art and um, you know, hopefully some of the joy I get in creating it is extended um, into people's homes. Absolutely. That's, that's great. So that's a lot of work. Is it just, <laughs> is it just you doing all of these things or do you have help or? No, I do. I, I have a small team and, and it's growing, which is great. Um, you know, as an entrepreneur, you're definitely wearing a lot of hats. Um, and I, someone once said, they're like, you're like a one woman army. And I just kind of chuckled because I do, you feel like that sometimes because, you know, mm -hmm. as when you run your own business, I mean, you're doing, you're doing everything, you know, and creating work. So, um, it is, but I love it. I love it so, so much. And I'm, yeah, I, I think I, I have a lot of energy and, um, a lot of drive and a lot of ideas. So you know, I, I haven't hit a limit yet. I want to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. So I saw that you have an artist in residence coming up at uh, Brooks school. Yes. Yeah. And yep. Up, out Is in that Boston. a show or so there will be a show and then it's residency and um, a teaching week. So I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that. Oh, how fun. So you'll be staying there for the week and teaching classes. Yes. Um, I don't know if it won't be like, like formal classes, but I'll get to kind of share my process and, um, and my work with every, with the students and yeah, it should be some, something different and kind of pay it forward, you know, pass on all the stuff that, man, I wish I knew when I was starting. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Since we're on that subject, then let me ask you, what was the best advice that was ever given to you when you were starting out? Okay. So aside from make your art, just do it, <laughs> which I think is key. Um, you know, I think my, my husband, he, oh, he's been such an incredible supporter and I tend to have lots of ideas and you know, my, my vision, I'm like, Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. And 
there's so much that you can, so much possibility out there right now. And in the beginning, I just, I wanted to do it all at once. And he, he, his advice was, you know, focus on, focus on one thing, focus on the thing that you love the most and that you really want to do and, and do that and flush it out. And then down the road, you know, you can start to add little bits and pieces and, so that has really stuck with me. Kind of gets to that 80-20 that I was was telling you. And fine art is my is my love, creating the original work. So that's where I put um, you know, my main focus. That's the thing that I work on the most. And once I got, you know, to a good place with that, then I started adding little bits and pieces in um with the fine art prints and with the home line. So um it all supports it. And I think I I find you know, what's great is sometimes what I'm working on with wallpaper will influence my collage work. And sometimes, you know, my original, original Symphonic Atlas series will influence my wallpaper. So it's really neat. Like it kind of all feeds each other. Oh, sure. I mean, it's like the original thread that we were talking about in the beginning. It's like it all kind of comes together because it's all coming from you. So, <laughs> yeah. and when you're creative, yeah. I think you can be creative in so many different ways. So right, it right. you have to stick to a label. So stay getting clear and on what you really want to focus on. Yes. I think, and you know, like fo- focusing on there's, oh, there's a, there's a good book out there. It's called the one thing and I can't think of the author. Um, but it's basically like, I mean, it's so easy when you're juggling so many different things to, start going down rabbit holes and, you know, be working on so many different things at once. Um, and sometimes those rabbit holes are good, but I think it's like, it's knowing what's the most important thing that I could be doing right now. That's going to make the biggest difference and kind of like keeping that in the back of your head. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, I have found has been kind of the best piece of advice that I've been given. And then what would be the best advice that you would give to your younger self starting out? So <laughs> my probably aside from getting over the fear and just saying, uh-uh, I'm going to do this and pushing through it because once you get through it and you come out the other side, there is nothing better than doing what you feel like you're called to do. I, I mean, I really, gosh, I just, I just want to like encourage everybody. If you have, if you have a passion, if you have an urge to do something, go and do it because life's too short. We only get one life, you know, and it's like, Mm -hmm. maybe more, I don't know. (laughs) Um, but life's too short. It's like you make the most of it and there's, there's nothing better. Um, but then the other thing I would say is, you know, being an artist, being a creative person, I think it's really important to, if you can think of, you know, you've got your practice, but then also to think of it as, you know, as an entrepreneur, as a business person and, um, really get that angle. Once you do that, then you can do anything. Um, and I, I kind of stumbled upon that. So I wish I kind of knew that a little bit more going into it. Um, what do you mean by that? Like mean, be more business mindset when you're creating your work? Well, I think, you know, if you follow the traditional gallery to artist route, this isn't as important, but if you're like, you know what, I want to go out there and I want to do it my way and I want to create a life and, um, and a career that's on my terms. Um, you know, it's not a typical, you know, like a lot of artists will have jobs and whatnot and to support their practice or they're doing it full time. Um, but I think you can, you know, if you look at it as you're an entrepreneur and look at it more as a business and, you know, all the things, all the components that go into running a business, in addition to your practice, then it's like sky's the limit. You can do, you can do anything. You can, um, you know, you can decide your hours, you can connect directly with your collectors. You, um, can just kind of, kind of live whatever that dream that is that you have. Mm. That's that's wonderful advice. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Gosh, thank you so much for sharing everything with us today. This is just really a, a lot of very helpful information. And I'm so happy to have you as the February featured artist. And um, just really, uh, this is wonderful. And I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Christy. Oh, it's been so much fun, Mari, speaking with you.
I love this. I think it's, it's, it's great what you're doing and it's so inspiring. Um, I really, really am honored to be a part of your show. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this podcast and you'd like to support it even more, you can join me over on patreon.com slash Mari Robeson and become a patron of mine. If you're a patron of mine, you'll receive bonus episodes every month only for patrons. You'll also receive 20% off all the merchandise in my online shop, mariropeson.bigcartel, and you will be receiving free printables every month that will be of my artwork and they're some really fun things. You can follow along on Instagram and you can see what I'm creating just for my patrons. I would deeply appreciate it. It would help me keep the lights on and it would help me pay all the fees that it takes to put together a podcast like this so that I can keep supporting all the artists, keep bringing you great information, keep paying it forward to the next generation of artists. It's just a wonderful thing and I would really deeply appreciate your support.